Do you got scum? Okay, before I asked, I should have told you what scum is. Scum, spelled S-C-U-M-M, -M, is the script creation utility for Maniac Mansion. It's the game engine that with, with which, a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, LucasArts used to create their awesome adventure games. Adventure, timeless classics like Maniac Mansion, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, Full Throttle. It was created by Eric Wilmunder, a guy you've never probably heard of, but the other guy who created it, Ron Gilbert, you might know as the creator of the Monkey Island games, and of course, it was the embedded uh, embedded into the scum system where all these other fun little uh, game engines, which all have all have these really awesome names like iMuse, Insane, Cyst, Phlegm, and Mucus with two M's. Wow. Those LucasArts guys, they really had a sense of humor. Anyway, being such a huge LucasArts adventure game fan, I decided to create this huge timeline of every designer director dude who ever worked on any LucasArts game, and basically to show you guys how these adventure games connected, because there were 12 games that were made, made using the Scum engine, and after which all of these people, you know, something happened to them. Obviously, this timeline focuses on the trio de force of Gilbert, Grousman, and Schaefer, who all created The Secret of Monkey Island. But we're going to talk about all these other guys on the timeline as well. And you can see the timeline in its full on my blog and links in the, in the description. Naturally, our little story begins with the game after which the Scum Engine was named, Maniac Mansion. And although Gilbert Grossman and Schaefer all worked on this game, it's worthy of note that Schaefer only peripherally worked on the game. He worked on the NES conversion of the game, and so was not really a creative contributor on that. Instead, and Grossman was also only on the writing crew, but instead there were no less than four designers credited on this game, and we're going to be... Uh, focusing a little bit on them. Four of these guys, uh, including Gilbert, Grossman, and these guys called David Fox and Gary Wimmick, all went on to work on Zack McCracken and the Alien Mindbenders. And we'll first start off with Gary Winnick's little timeline here. Now, as I understand, Gary Winnick was primarily a graphic designer of some kind, and after Zack McCracken, he basically jumped to a different project uh, while David Fox, Grossman, and Gilbert all went off to make Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade, the adventure game, which also ends David Fox's involvement in the timeline. Gary Winnick, however, goes on to work with Brian Moriarty, the LucasArts fail master, on the infamous adventure game flop known as Loom. After that, Winnick returns with, to work on the sequel for Maniac Mansion, The Day of the Tentacle, after which we, he's never heard from again either. Noah Falstein is an interesting name. He's, one, he's the fourth designer credited on Maniac Mansion, yet he is never mentioned again in any of other LucasArts projects as a main designer or director, but he does create an important side uh, branch to the timeline because he was the only guy from any of the other major LucasArts adventure games to have worked on Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, or as it was known until recently, Indy 4. This is rather surprising to me because it is such a well-loved, known, and, you know, beloved classic in the adventure game uh, in, a, in, in LucasArts' adventure game library, and it's surprising to me that absolutely no one. Well, there might have been crew from the other games, but no creative designer, director guys from the other games. Instead, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, Noah Falstein was not even one of the directors. It was directed by a guy named Hal Barwood, and he is only notable because because apart from working on a couple of Star Wars games, years later, he would go on to direct Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine. So, Hal Barwood has some serial, serious indie cred, if you know what I mean. After Indy 3, uh, Gr Grossman and Gilbert rejoin Schaefer to create The Secret of Monkey Island, and this trio de force later, of course, creates Monkey Island 2, after which, unfortunately, their trails depart. Uh, Gilbert leaves LucasArts to, create, to work at Humongous Entertainment, Grossman and Schaefer go on to work on The Day of the Tentacle with Gary Winnick, as I previously mentioned. But there's another name that creates another important side branch to this uh, LucasArts timeline, which we'll be discuss in a minute. Now, Dave Grossman also leaves LucasArts after The Day of the Tentacle to go work at Humongous Entertainment. And on Gilbert, one, a little while later, after leaving, going to Humongous Entertainment, uh, Gilbert goes into retirement, then he works at Hotsit Studios for a little bit, then he goes into retirement again. 
G Grossman, on the other hand, goes on to join his fellow former LucasArts employees at Telltale Games and creates Tales of Monkey Island. Schaefer, however, continues at LucasArts and goes on to create Full Throttle, and after that, the critically acclaimed, yet bad set not so well selling Grim Fandango, after which Schaefer 2 leaves LucasArts to, to create Double Fine Productions. Now for this last important side trail of the LucasArts adventure game timeline, from Monkey Island 2, designer Larry Ahern goes to work on Sam and Max Hit the Road, from which three other names emerge which all should be very familiar if, you're, if you know your Monkey Island games. Larry Ahern and Jonathan Ackley go from Sam and Max to work on The Day of the Tentacle, after which Jonathan Ackley goes to work on the Brian Mor second Brian Moriarty fail fest, The Dig. Ahern sits that one out, and the two rejoin each other again on Tim Schafer's Full Throttle, and from the wings of Full Throttle, they go on to become the creative designers and directors of The Curse of Monkey Island, creating one of the best adventure games of all time, then disappearing forever. The two other important names on this timeline, uh, also from the Sam and Max game, are Sean Clark and Michael Stemley. And Clark goes to join his, fe his fellow designer, Ackley, on the Brian Moriarty Felfest The Dig. But after that, he and Stemley rejoin each other on the fourth and most controversial Monkey Island game of them all, The Escape from Monkey Island, after which Clark disappears, but Stemley goes to join his fellow... LucasArts employees jumps the boat to Telltale Games and has his creative say in Tales of Monkey Island. So that's the Scum Masters timeline. I hope you found that interesting and remember links in the subscription to the full timeline. And if you want to comment anything on this, if you found this interesting, if you found this boring, whatever, just uh, send some feedback and uh, see you on the next one.